Hi, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah and I am a family nurse practitioner. I remember when I was first interested in applying to an urgent care position, I was so nervous. I didn't know what to expect. I had only heard horror stories from other providers. So it took me a long time to actually take that leap of faith and apply. And honestly, now that I'm working in the urgent care setting, I wish I had done it so much sooner. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you the 11 most common diagnoses that I see in the urgent care setting, along with some of the misconceptions and um, some of the things that I picked up within the past six months that I've been working there. So if you're interested in that information, if you're on the fence about working in the urgent care setting or you've been considering it, then this video is for you. In this diagnosis, I literally see every single day that I work, and that would be acute otitis media. This is not a diagnosis that is exclusive to children, although I do more commonly diagnose children with acute otitis media. This is definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to brush up on. My next most common diagnosis is so general, but it's viral upper respiratory infection. I have so many patients that come in complaining about, oh, I have a scratchy throat, or oh, my nose is running, I have a slight headache, I took some Tylenol, I took some Robitussin, um, so I end up running numerous tests and everything shows up negative. And at the end of the day, it's just a virus. I talk to patients in detail. They just want that reassurance that, you know, they're not dealing with COVID or something. So viral upper respiratory infection is definitely a more common diagnosis that I see on a daily basis at the urgent care. Next up is everybody's favorite, and that is rashes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a provider say that they love diagnosing rashes. So some of the more common rashes that I end up diagnosing, psoriasis, contact dermatitis, shingles. I just diagnosed a patient with shingles yesterday. I see a lot of diaper rashes in children. I am by no means an expert in rashes at all. I am a work in progress. I'm looking forward to the day that I feel confident where I can look at it instantly and say, oh, I know exactly what that is and just spit it out. But I am not there yet. I am working on it. <laughs> a lot of patients come in complaining of nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Sometimes it's bacterial. Other times it's viral being exposed to a norovirus or a rotavirus, but a lot of GI complaints. So it's something that you are going to encounter. And there are a number of different differential diagnoses that you're going to have to rule out. So definitely brush up on your GI. It's very important. Ortho, I see a lot of ortho. Um, I heard that in the summer months, that's when you're going to encounter more ortho complaints, um, which I would say is pretty consistent to what I've been seeing in the urgent care. So I've seen a lot of patients come in lately with knee injuries, um, a lot of ankle injuries, tripping and falling, low back pain, um, I actually see low back pain. I saw low back pain even in the winter months, but low back pain is definitely something that you're gonna be seeing as well. So be able to rule out some of the more red flag symptoms, but definitely study your ortho. After rashes, I feel like ortho is next up on my list of things that I greatly dislike, <laughs> but it comes with the territory. So it's just something that you're gonna encounter for sure. So another complaint is chest pain and or, and or palpitations. So you do wanna brush up on your EKG interpretation. Definitely something that you wanna feel confident in for sure. So I see a lot of UTIs, typically in women, um, but you're definitely going to wanna brush up on how to interpret urine dipstick results and what constitutes a UTI. I do a lot of STI testing. Oftentimes people don't come in with symptoms necessarily. They just come in and say, oh, I had an exposure and I would like to be tested. I do treat prophylactically and I can offer treatment on site if someone is having symptoms, but they're not quite sure and we don't have the results for their testing back just yet. So my final two most common diagnoses are COVID-19 and influenza. I do have a lot of people that still come in requesting those tests. So. Definitely something that you wanna brush up on, especially the current CDC recommendations for isolation and the current treatment that's available for COVID. So definitely something that you're gonna encounter in the urgent care setting. I also wanted to add in just a few little tidbits about what it's like working in the urgent care setting. I see a lot of returning patients. I never knew that people keep coming back to the urgent care. I thought it was one of those I see you, I treat you, I see you along your way, I never see you again type of situations. But no, like people come back. People bring their kids um, 
people return. I've only been there for six months and I've had patients who have returned four times in a six month period. So don't automatically assume that you're never gonna see these people again. And that's another reason why you wanna treat everyone with kindness and respect because your chances of encountering that patient again are probably a little bit higher than what you're thinking. So be mindful of that. I was always under the impression that patients would be really upset with me if I didn't prescribe them an antibiotic, but that's actually not true at all. Oftentimes I don't prescribe antibiotics at all. I don't feel that it's appropriate and the patients are typically really understanding of that and I'll just send something else into the, <laughs> into the pharmacy. I've been working in the urgent care setting for six months now. I have not prescribed not one narcotic. I haven't had the need to do so. Um, if I have somebody that's coming in with a diagnosis that does warrant it, absolutely, I, I, I have no problem doing that. But of course we wanna be good stewards um, and we wanna be careful about that sort of thing. So just be mindful of that. Something else that I learned working in the urgent care is typically you know when you see a sick patient, okay? Your, your radar will start to go off like, okay, this patient is really sick. You know, they're really lethargic. They're, they're having difficulty speaking to you, especially with kids. You start to gain a sense of who your very sick, sick patients are just by observation. Um, and this is something that definitely comes with time. This is something that I'm learning um, as I go. If you are interested in working in urgent care, this is your sign. Go for it, shoot for the stars, do not be afraid. You are gonna run into those situations that are like, huh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do about this? But guess what, that's why we have our resources. That's why you have people like me who are there to help you. I think you should just take the leap of faith. Honestly, it's been one of the most awesome experiences. I find myself learning new things every single day. You'll never really know what you're capable of doing until you just take that leap of faith. So go for it. I'm rooting for you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in my next video.